شهر رمضان الذي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أبي القاسم محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خس إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم Brothers and sisters in Islam brothers and sisters in Iman Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh For the past two to three days we've been assembling here for a purpose and the main purpose objectives and aims are to remind one another about the basis of Ramadan. Fortunately or unfortunately, most of us in our daily lives, we tend to forget the main purpose of our creation. Why were we created? We've talked about Ramadan. We've talked about Saum. But it's a norm. It's normal now for some of us who sit on this side to exclude or forget to remind you about our being created and the purpose for our being created. Having talked about so many things, though in brief, having talked about the global aspect of human life and where it has reached at this particular moment, having told one another about the dangers that are coming our way, We need to go deeper and look at ourselves first before we look outside ourselves. This is simply because I've been emphasizing on the aspect of consciousness instead of fear. When we talk about taqwa, we talk about consciousness. 
being conscious of the creator being conscious of allah and to be more conscious or rightly conscious of allah we need to go into ourselves first in talking about human being and how he or she was created we briefly touched upon surah al alaq bismillahir rahmanir rahim iqra bism rabbikal ladhi khalaq khalaqal insana min alaq iqra wa rabbukal akram alladhi 'allama bil qalam allama al insana ma lam ya'lam And then I tried to emphasize that to go into this chapter to look at these five verses we need to have knowledge about two very crucial and important subjects and that is biology and genetics lacking this knowledge keeps us who stay on this side whom you always attend to listen to us keeps us at bay and not giving you the proper context of al alaq instead stick to iqra yesterday day before yesterday attached upon the sperm and the egg then i briefed you about chromosomes and how they form into a dna i went a little bit farther and talked about how many volumes are needed what kind of size of volumes and i mentioned encyclopedia britannica 49 volumes to write down the data that's in that sperm and the egg that forms the dna for allah to create a human being today as you had me in my opening recitation i recited recited the surah العرش دو فيري شورت بس اتس تو هيفي ا سوره فور وان هو هاز نوليدج اباوت ات فاست وين الله سيز والعصر It's like taking an oath it's like swearing by the passage of time in al insana la fi khusr surely humanity is in grave loss then he comes illa alladhina aman except those who have faith those who believe but contextually someone has to know little things that appear in the chapter that most people tend to ignore these words that go wa 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 amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haqq wa tawasaw bis sabr this chains these things together to make them four those who have these four things are not in a loss are not among those who are lost so it says except those who have faith and that is wa do good and urge each other to justice some say to truth no to justice to being just and urge each other to passion sabr 
So you either in grave loss or you are a believer. But being a believer is not enough. That's why I said sometimes you don't pay attention to the word wow. Having faith is not enough. You have to start by doing good. Amalu salih. Wa amilu salihat. Wa tawasu bil haq. Wa tawasu bil sabr. Then it becomes four things. After belief, then there's doing good, doing justice, and having patience. Now you become one of those who are not in grave loss. But how can you believe, how can you have faith when you don't know, when you are not conscious of who Allah is? Now to be conscious of who Allah is, I suggested humbly is for one to go inside himself or herself. Don't look outside. Though there are very many ayahs outside, there are many signs. If you look at the trees, sizes. If you go into the deep sea, look at some creatures in there who can't come above 50 meters. If they do, they die. But still, Allah provides for them deep down there. So when we mention about these things, we need to talk about ourselves first. We need to know ourselves first. <clears throat> so the human body, after 23 chromosomes from the drop of sperm and 23 chromosomes from the egg, situated in mom's uh, whatever place, forming a DNA comes to being clot of blood, which is al-alaq. The human body is the most complicated machine in the world. We see with it, we hear with it, breathe with it, walk and run with it, and sense pleasure with it. Its bones, muscles, Arteries, veins, and internal organs are organized with marvelous design. And when we examine this design in detail, we find even more amazing facts. Every part of the body though each may seem to be so different from another, is made up of the same material cells. White cells, red cells, you have white cells and red cells. I have a liver, you have a liver. I have a heart, you have the same organ heart. I have brains, eyes, you have the same. And they all come from the 46 chromosomes. When you go deeper, that's why if you remember, those who've been here since we started these lectures, I said just to talk about Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq khalaq al-insana min alaq would take us the whole Ramadan. Let alone Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram. To know what is Akram, to know the greatness of the Creator. That's why I urge you to go inside your body. Find books, read about the human body. Cells, each of which is one thousandth of a millimeter, one thousandth. cell which a thousandth 
not a tenth or a fifth of a millimeter are the structural units that form our body and everything in it. Some of these cells unite to form bones, others to, f to form nerves, the liver, the inner layer of the stomach, the skin, or the cornea, they call it cornea, C-O-R-N-E-A, of the eyeball. Each has the size and shape that exactly meet the requirement of the part of the body. If you try to measure distance from this ear to this ear, from this corner of the eye to this corner of the eye, from up down here to up here, you'll be amazed at how accurate is the creation. How and when did cells which have such varied functions come into being? Remember, the surah is al-alaq, it's a clot. But before being a clot, it was a sperm and an egg. And before that, it was proteins and vitamins. And before that, it was the earth. So when you see the Quran talking about earth first, being a sperm, turning into a clot of blood, now you understand where you come from. It's the earth, vitamins and proteins, you eat through food, drink through water. These are the chemicals he uses inside you. Making the sperm and the egg, placing it while the mother is not even aware. Placing your sperm in its proper place while you are not even aware. Gives consent when he wishes. You can always enjoy with your wife, have sexual intercourse with your wife, but when the consent is not there, you don't make babies. It's only when Allah gives consent, like, okay, let it be. Kun fire kun. How and when did cells which have such varied functions come into being? The answer to this question will take us into a process whose every moment is filled with mystery. In the Quran, Allah sometimes refers to the wonders of the earth and the sky. And sometimes to the mysteries of the creation of living things as various signs of his existence. One of the most important of these signs is his wondrous creation of human beings. That's why I urge you to go into yourself. That's why I started by reciting Wal Asr in Al Insana Lafi Husr Illa Lavina Amanu Wa Amilu Swalihat Watawaso Bil Hak Watawaso Bil Sobr. These are the grades he's looking for, for you to be under his guidance. In many verses, as a lesson to human beings, God advises them to turn and look at their own creation. If you're reading the Quran and seeing the translation, then many verses are requesting you. And that's Allah. Why should he request you? Why doesn't he just order you? That's the wisdom he uses. 
request you to look at yourself. Not on the mirror. Go into yourself. See the veins. See the organs have given you their functions. Don't you still see how great I am? As the creator? He explains in detail how human beings come to be and what stages they pass through. But still human beings are not paying attention. In Surah Waqiyah, Al Waqiyah, chapter 56, verse 57, he mentions and he asks, Nahnu khalaknakum falawla tusaddiqoon. We have created you, so why do you not believe? Afara'aytum ma'atum noon. Have you seen that which you emit? Have you seen it? Have you stayed like this and checked your sperm, what you emit? And it's not the whole that you emit that I choose to make babies from. No, I pick just the substance, just small part of it. The rest is just wastage. I showed you it's as small as this pen, you know, even this is bigger. But to write down the data that Allah put into this small particle, it takes 49 volumes of Encyclopedia Britannica. He goes on. وَأَنْتُمْ تَخْلُقُونَهُ أَمْ نَحْنُ خَالِقُونَ Is it you who creates it? Or are we the creator? Now look at the language. Or are we? How many are they? He starts by asking, we have created you, so why do you not believe? Then he tells you, have you seen that which you emit? Then it says, is it you who creates it? That which you emit, not what I create from what you emitted. No, that which you emit, have you seen it? Have you checked it? Before making a baby. That which you emit, is it you who creates it? Or me inside you? Then I pick from it some little substance that I put in that egg or put together with the egg in a womb and I do my job. And it goes on, that's why I said Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq khalaq al-insana min alaq takes the whole Ramadan because we'll have to go into biology now. And check the womb, the ovary, the veins, what they do. When the mother thinks, when you annoy her, how much effect does it go to the kid when you touch her? For the nine months, every 40 days after forming the clot of blood, there's a substance of the body of the kid inside the stomach that changes as I move towards fulfilling my creation as the creator. So we'd have to go step by step, okay, after the clot of blood, what next? When does Allah put the bones? When does he put the veins? How does he put the veins? When does he blow the soul into the body? Why do I explain this? It's because we, there's a difference between context and concept.
most of the time we who sit on this side tend to ignore the context of these verses and chapters. We like to do what I call topical exegesis, not contextual exegesis. exegesis. And I don't say it's bad, but I prefer contextual. I prefer sticking on a verse, and if I do more, I'd go for one hadith, expound on the two. Remember the hadith that Prophet Wasallam says, Ana Madinatul Ilm wa Ali Babuha. I'm the city of knowledge, and Ali alayhi salam is its get. But he finishes with so whoever desires knowledge, let him enter the get. If we move a little bit from Al-Alaq and we go to Iqra, Iqra, there are two or more way of looking at the word Iqra. There are those who say it means read, and there are those who say it means proclaim. Either one of the two, if you want to read, you need knowledge. You need scale, you need filters to weigh and filter what you are reading. Like I told you, taqwa, everyone who say, fear Allah, I say no, be conscious of Allah. To attain taqwa, you need to have knowledge. That's why I say the best of the knowledge that you acquire on earth is inside you. If Allah is inside you closer than the jugular vein, where are you looking for? Why don't you go inside? What do you fear? I urge you, buy a book that talks about the human body, anatomy. Go inside, check yourself. Don't check yourself on the mirror. We created you, he says. So why do you not confirm the truth? Have you thought about the spam that you ejaculate? Is it you who created it? Or are we the creator? The essence of a human being composed of 60 to 70 kilos of flesh. Can you imagine? Let alone bones. Flesh, 60 to 70 kilos. And a mass of bones was originally contained in a drop of fluid. Can you imagine? Look at me, you can't see yourselves. Look at me. I was a drop of fluid. Look at the bones, look at the flesh, look at the eye and what's in it. If you go into the eye, how it, is, it was created and what power it has, you'd be shocked. If you go to the heart and see what functions it is for, the liver, the way it is like a recycling plant, inside your body for every liquid that you put in.
how many times does the heart pump? Yet you are not even conscious that it's pumping. Let alone when you are asleep, even when you are awake, you don't even know it's pumping. And it's pumping blood all over. Those trillions of cells are moving, taking oxygen to your brains. Without them, everything is going to go topsy-turvy. It is certainly a wonder that an intelligent, feeling human being with the faculties of speech and hearing and with a remarkably complex physical structure could come into existence from a drop of fluid. This development was certainly not the result of a random process or the operation of chance, but rather of a conscious process of creation. How can we deny that? This and much more than this is what we came here for. The 15 days I'll be around. But how come we are what we are today? Not in terms of creation, in terms of the status we are in as Muslims, as humans. How did we become so disorganized? We pray together, we believe in the same Allah, the same Prophet, same Qibla, we fast. Some of us give sadaqah and zakat. Some go for hajj. But how come we are disunited? How? As we go by with these lectures, I'd come to a surah that talks about the significance, importance, and relevance of unity. Most people overlook this surah, but it's because of the contextual aspect of the surah, most of them don't look at it that way. Scholars talk about it when they talk about the Battle of Uhud, Surah Saf. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Then it goes, Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa huwa al-aziz al-hakim. Ya ayuha al-lazina aman, lima taquluna ma la taf'alun. Kabura maktan in the Allah an taqulu ma la tafalun in Allah yuhibu ladina yukatiluna fi sabilihi safan ka annahum bunyanun marsus. We'd go into that surah, those four verses, when we'd be expounding on what unity is all about. And some other surahs and Hadith. Because Prophet وسلم, speaks about a piece of flesh inside the body. He says, Inna fil jasadi mudra. Ida salahat salah al jasad kullu. Wa ida fasadat fasad al jasad kullu. Ala wa hiya al kalb. Talks about the heart being corrupted. And what is corruption? So when we go into that surah, we talk about these things, we go into what is corruption? What is facade?
but for a people to come back to life people need guidance but yet guidance is not enough people need to be organized most of the time we talk about issues we talk about problems but we don't know how to organize ourselves we like to look at other aspects of life other human beings to sort of send our message sometimes we like to find scapegoats and think if it wasn't for him i'd never have been like this no it is only your own self to blame how do we go about this how can we settle this down what is to be done why do we organize first and foremost we have to agree that organization is the key to mass struggle if we want to struggle and put our lives straight again we need to be organized what is organization organization does not just refer to a committee or a constitution organization for us refers to a process which involves the following building the unity of our people number 1 raising the level of understanding and awareness of our people number 2 bringing about their active involvement in the struggles over issues of daily concern to us all that's the third step giving this unity and involvement structure and form content consistency and direction that's number 4 all that i've mentioned taking place in an ongoing and living way is the process of organization i repeat what is organization organization does not just refer to a committee or a constitution organization refers to a process which involves the following four things one is building the unity of our people to raising the level of understanding and awareness of our people that's what we are doing right now we need majlises like this that raise awareness of both is- islam and contemporary issues because the quran entails all that you see it's wonder about this ولا ترضى ان قال يهودا ولا النصارى حتى تتبع ملتهم ولا ولا ترضى ان قال يهودا والنصارى حتى تتبع ملتهم what we talking right now when we talk about the new world order when we talk about illuminati 
when we talk about secret societies, when we talk about what's going on on earth right now, you see happening in Syria, in Turkey, all this, you need to know what time it is, who is doing it. When we see what's happening in Palestine, we need to know. So who is going to raise this awareness in the people? It's not about confrontation. It's about knowledge. It's about knowing what's happening. Where are we? Where are we from? Where are we right now? And how are we going forward? So someone has to raise the level of understanding and awareness of our people, bringing about their active involvement in the struggles of our issues of daily concern to us all. Yesterday, my brothers here, my younger brothers, after we finished yesterday's lecture, some of them came and asked me this question like, what is the solution to what you are telling us? So we briefed one another on what is the solution. And one of the solution that I would like to touch upon right now, using the minutes that are remaining, is what stops the youth within the community or the society at large coming up with an idea of doing a micro enterprise, small micro enterprise business. For example, every after morning Fajr prayer, there is a group of young guys, young brothers and young sisters, who would be supplying the needs of every household by being paid a little something more than the money you'd give them to go and buy for you those things. So it's like they are charging you their labor. If you use 20,000, then you'd go like 22,000. So 2,000 for their labor charge. Early in the morning, they supply if you need charcoal, you need milk, vegetables, bread, maybe you're reading newspaper. So they supply you by seven o'clock, everything is at home without your wife moving to the market. In the evening, the younger sisters move back to the households and take the money. If you either pay daily, weekly, fortnightly or monthly. How many of us can do that job? You could be having your degree and still do that because you're getting at least 50,000 Tanzanian shillings by 7.30, quarter to eight, you're okay. You have 50,000 in your pocket, 20, 30,000. How many houses can you supply? But we'll have to sit down with them and with those who can float around some little cash for their startup, which they'd have to pay back. And the community can keep something to do with a revolving fund that is given out, but given back so that someone else can be given. And this goes way out, not only the youth, but even mothers who are doing small businesses like doing mandazi, doing viazi, karai, kukanga, things like this. You buy them flour, you buy them cooking oil, and then say, okay, please pay me back. How much do you make? I make 20,000. So I'd be taking 2,000 on a daily basis till you pay me back my money so that I give someone else. This kind of idea has to come up within the community because right now with COVID-19, you know what the economy is all about. Or they say it is like this, but that's the great reset now. They are resetting business. 
resetting politics, resetting everything else. Get the book by Klaus Schwab, CEO of World Economic Forum. It's called The Great Reset or The Fourth Industrial Revolution. Read the book and then you'll see what I'm telling you. For today, I think I'll stop up here. It's 9.30. As usual, if any mistake is mine, if I said anything that annoys you, I'm sorry. If I said something that got into you and you can make good use of it, please pray for me. Otherwise, thank you very much for coming up this evening. Pray for one another that we meet tomorrow again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.